Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is Parallax Abstraction, and welcome, God, after a day of craziness, to my retro flashback research stream for Rare Replay. So, yes, for those of you who don't know, uh, I actually run a YouTube channel over at youtube.com slash pxabstraction that focuses principally but not exclusively on retro games. Uh, you may be watching that here right now, actually. So... This stream is going out in 720p at 30 frames a second. I am also recording this, however, at 1080p 60, and this will be archived on my YouTube channel as well. So uh, I didn't tend to do 20 minute on average videos talking about different retro games and collections, and I'm gonna do one on Rare Replay as well, but I've literally never played this before. I got this yesterday, wanted to do this yesterday and had all kinds of problems with both Xbox Live and other things that prevented that, but I digress. Um, but this is a massive collection, and it frankly takes... It is going to be impossible to showcase everything it offers in one video. Uh, one short video. So I'm doing this stream tonight where I'm going to spend a couple hours going through every game. Uh, you'll get my impressions on the fly. And this video is going to go up at the same time as the retro flashback. So you'll be able to get the concise version from there. Or if you want to see the raw everything, then you can do this. So, enough preamble. Let's roll. Like I said, I uh, when I came home yesterday, this was supposed to be installed and it wasn't, which was one of the reasons I couldn't do this last night. So, um, this is my first time running it. This is 30 rare games spanning all kinds of different eras for $30. Everything from the NES to the 360. I'm very curious how well it's put together. On surface, it's great value. Ooh, snazzy intro. Whoa. I don't fully understand what they're singing. They put some real effort into this intro. Wow! This is impressive! Well done! That is an impressive intro! Holy crap, man! <laughs> wow! Alright, well, let's dive in. I only even know some of the games that are in this collection. I don't actually know the whole thing, so this is going to be a barrel of discoveries all around, I think. So, let's dive in, ladies and gents. It's a rare replay. That's going to be stuck in my head now. God. Uh. Rare revealed snapshots, bite-sized retro challenges that mix up the rules? Oh, is that like NES Remix? Ooh, that'll be fun. Revisit Rare's history in these exclusive bonus videos. As you earn stamps and rank up, you'll earn unlock... Oh, you have to... Man. You have to play to unlock these videos? That's dumb. If you want history, like, just give people the history. Don't lock it behind a friggin' play wall. That's kind of cruddy. Alright, well, can't do much with this. So yeah, bite-sized retro challenges that mix up the rules. Snapshots are bite-sized challenges that mix up the rules of older games. Completing them will earn you stamps and other rewards. You can also test your metal with playlists, theme sets of challenges that must be completed back-to-back -back within a set number of lives. What a cool idea! 
All right, well, let, let's, let's go check out the list first and see what we got here. 30 games in this, spanning all the way from, like, I think, like, the ZX Spectrum era, and, and there's, like, nine 360 games or something in here, too. All, so there's a lot of stuff in here for 30 bucks. So what do we got? We got the original jetpack. Word up. I have low controller batteries. Thank you. Lunar Jetman. Yeah. Attic Attack. Yeah. Saber Wolf. Oh, God. Underworld. Night Lore. I know some of these, not all of them. Gunfright. Slalom. Wait. Is that like the NES Slalom? I thought Nintendo made that. RC Pro Amp. Word! Oh, I can't wait to play that. Cobra Triangle. Fucking A. Snake Rattle and Roll. Solar Jetman. I did a video on this before. Good game, but it will kick your ass. Digger T-Rock, Battletoads, one of the hardest games ever made. RC Pro-Am 2, mm-hmm. Battletoads arcade game, all right. KI Gold, oh yeah, screw you, Jeff Gersman. Killer Instinct's a good game. Blast Core, Banjo-Kazooie, the original, nice. Jet Force Gemini, nice. Per the original Perfect Dark, which I've never played. Word to the wise, I do know that Goldeneye is not included in this because of dumb licensing issues. Sadly, yeah. Uh, Rare owned Perfect Dark, which is why that's in here, but we do we did not get Goldeneye, which is a bummer. Banjo Tooie, okay. Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Never played this. I don't know. Grabbed by the Ghoulies, never played this or either. Heard it was good. Cameo. I like this game. I thought this was alright. Perfect Dark Zero, heard that was pretty bad. Viva Pinata. Never really clicked with me, but I know people loved it. Jetpack Refueled. I bought this on Xbox Live Arcade. This is a great game. Viva Pinata Trouble in Paradise, the sequel, Banzo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Now this is a is a classic uh, the, the, right here. This is one of the rare's best games ever, I in my opinion. 30 bucks, man. That is some value ass value if I do say so myself. This is incredible. This is an incredible value for what you get in here, especially if these are emulated right. But let's start right from the beginning, shall we? We're going to go a little bit through all of these. So another big thing with this game, it has 10... Whoops, I hit the wrong button. This game has 10,000 gamer score in it, which is ridiculous. I play for low-hanging fruit achievements. I'm not an achievement nut, but 10,000 is bonkers. And there's several for each game. And I know there is an achievement literally for starting every game. So we'll get all those tonight because we're going to go through all these. This is one of the best retro collection front ends I've ever seen, I have to say. Okay, controls. And you can turn sheets on. Well done, guys! This is... My initial impressions are already incredible. And you can get to the snapshot challenges from here, I guess. Destroy at least 10 bubble aliens within 30 seconds. Alright, well, let, let's just go play the full game. So, I don't know, this is probably going to be a really long stream, uh, probably till I go to bed, but I'm going to sit here and give a little check out to each of these, so, let's do her. Some games will auto-save your progress as you play, and you'll be able to load and create game saves from the menu pane at any time. Save states! Oh man, I'm going to need to make notes on this collection. The next time you play, you'll be given the option to load one of your game saves or start fresh. Very cool, that's like virtual console kind of thing. And it's upscaled? Join the jet set. There it is. Jetpack. Play the game for the first time. Uh, I don't remember. I played Jetpack because Jetpack was actually included in uh, in uh, Jetpack re uh, Refueled. Um. Shoot, I'm going to have to turn that off. My uh, Windows 10 machine is, because uh, I'm tied into my Xbox account on Windows 10, it's, uh, this is controlling weird. Uh, because I'm tied into my Xbox Live account on Windows 10, it's going to make that noise every time I unlock an achievement. Yeah, the... So, I played this on... Um because it was bundled in with Jetpack Refueled, I don't remember it moving this fast. 
this feels particularly quick. So, I mean, basic, the basic idea of this game is just you, you have to, and it, this gets progressively harder as you go, you have to pick up the components of your rocket ship in order and drop them down and then get the fuel for it so that you can take off. Yeah, I'm getting like a weird screen refresh on this thing. Yeah, and then I believe you have to fill it up with fuel in order to take off, so you need several fuels. But yeah, I, I'm gonna have to check, but this, to me, feels like it's playing weird. I might have to compare this to the, uh... Either the emulated version I have on the 360, or just fire this up on the, Z the ZX Spectrum. Because this definitely feels out of whack. Frame rate feels... it feels too quick. It would be a real shame if this collection that clearly had so much love put into it does not have good emulation. Because uh, you know, the, the ZX Spectrum, generally not a 60 frames per second box. The ZX Spectrum didn't have much more horsepower than your average garden vegetable. So, there we go. So, I got my fuel, so I'm heading out. Missed that diamond, but what are you gonna do? Now I've landed on the next planet, and I have to fuel up again. And I, I don't remember what the... And you see we have different faster enemies. I don't remember what the nuke symbol does. Hmm. Okay. Well, you sort of get the idea from that one there. It's pretty uh, straightforward. I don't know how... How do you get back? Okay, there's the rewind function. Okay, well, let's try that. So, rewind is on by default, but you can do infinite lives. And yeah, you can literally rewind your progress. That's pretty funny. Oh, okay, so you hold the menu pane to leave. So I can save here, and then if I want to load, I can just load back in. Very cool, and it's instant. Ooh, I've been awarded a stamp. Your ticket will be stamped automatically whenever you reach an in-game milestone, complete snapshots, or finish playlists. Keep earning stamps to unlock player tiles and new rare revealed content. I'm gonna have to work on that because I want that rare I want that rare revealed content. Like that behind the scenes stuff is gonna be the most fascinating thing for me, but let's try a snapshot off before we go to the next one. So destroy at least ten bubble aliens within thirty seconds. So this, I believe, is based on enemies from a higher level. What was it, 10 within 30? This is probably an early one, so it's probably not that hard. I say as I get my ass beat. Alright, let's try this again. So yeah, just to reiterate... Jesus. So yeah, just to reiterate what I said before, this is uh, this pro video probably will go up on my YouTube channel, but uh, as sort of a really hardcore deep dive look at at uh, Rare Replay, but I'm going to be doing um, uh, a more condensed, normal sized version of Retro Flashback um, that will be the result of all this research for those who don't want to watch a three hour stream of of this collection, which I mean you should, but. People have time, you know, don't have a lot of time, and there we go, I did it. So I can, oh, and you can keep going until you run out the clock, I guess, and uh, try to best your, try to best your score. Hey! Oh, unfazed. Complete a jetpack snapshot. Okay, 
so there's probably an achievement in every game for doing one snapshot as well, so, alright. And I guess the spectator thing is your overall rank. So those stamps, there's probably a different stamp for every game that you that you get. So, alright, well let's what's the second sound about? Get three fuel fuel pods to your rocket as quickly as you can. Okay. It doesn't say in what amount of time, so. I probably shouldn't have dropped that above it because it takes it forever to fall. Oh god. That's rough, man. It's weird that it puts the diamond on the screen. I don't like that just gives you points, but I don't believe points is a is a factor here. Okay, yeah, yeah, I that notification thing has gotta go. <laughs> I'm gonna have to uh pause for a moment and swap back to my PC to turn that off, otherwise you're going to hear that every time. There's three! Hooray! I did it. These, this is really cool. This, this, these are like those little NES Remix challenges. And of course, you got leaderboards. People don't like retro stuff. 428th. Oof. What's the top 10? 11 seconds, because of course it is. Because every friggin' game on the Xbox has a bunch of savants in it. How many snapshots are there? There's five. Alright. Let's see if we can do this quickly. Assemble your rocket, fuel it, and blast off within 60 seconds? That's a tall order. That's a really tall order, if you ask me. But we're gonna try it. Come on, give me the fuel, give me the fuel, give me the fuel. Video game, where, oh, there it is. All right, we got this. We got this. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. One more. Oh. Bollocks. No! Oh, I was greedy. <laughs> that was totally my fault. I was greedy. Man. I should try. Uh, I should try this with my girlfriend this weekend. Some of these games are two-player. She probably. Uh, she might enjoy them. Actually. I bet the record on the world record on this is like some guy who did it in like ten seconds too, somehow. Because what I should be doing is like I'll see if I can do it. I should no, I just screwed it up. I should be getting to a lower level before I pull the fuel towards the ship, because that's how you get it to. Because that way it doesn't have to fall very far and it seats into the ship very quickly. And you don't have to uh, wait for it. We out! 50 seconds. Boosh! Let's see if we can complete all the stamps in one game. I bet the stamps in some of the games like Viva Pinata and uh, Nuts and Bolts are pretty crazy. Because they're basically like sub-achievements, right? Complete five full wraparounds of the playfield. Okay. So let's just go through the screen. This is probably way harder than it looks. Especially with those things. Oh yeah. This is gonna be a fun one. Alright. Well let's do let's let's complete I'm gonna try I, I wanna see what happens when you complete all five snapshots for a game, so I'm gonna complete all the ones for this, and then we'll move on to the next game, and I won't spend a lot of time on the, the snapshots for each one of them, because we do have quite a collection to go through here as well. One thing I'm going to look up as well, uh, I'm not sure if it's true or not, I, I have to confirm it before I do my main informational video, but um, the um, so when I, I bought this digitally 
and so it downloaded the main game, but then all of the 360 specific games in the collection um, were separate independent downloads. And I believe that means that uh, the 360 titles will be playable on their own uh, via the Xbox uh, 360 backwards compatibility they announced a little while ago for Xbox One. Which is weird though, because it's not out yet unless you're in the preview program, and I am not in the preview program. But, good stuff. But, um... Yeah, so I, I am not in the preview program, so I don't know... I don't know if I can... Maybe I'll try that tonight, because if you could run them on their own, that would mean that you not only could run them outside the collection, but, like, for example, in, when you run it in this package, each game only has, like, a couple of achievements related to each game in the collection. But if you could run the 360 games on their own, technically you could earn the full thousand points in each game. I think that's what they mean when they say this package has 10,000 gamer score, because I don't think this base game has 10,000 gamer score. But I think if you factor in this plus all of the individual 360 titles, that's how you get 10,000 gamer score, I'm guessing. But uh, I'm gonna have to look that up. Your quad laser phaser's out of power. Fuel your rocket and blast off without shooting in it. Okay. So fuel the rocket and blast off without firing a shot. That's, that's, that's rough of cakes. Uh, all right, hang on. Okay, I don't have to build the rocket. I just have to fire it, or to fuel it. It's slightly less horrible. Slightly less horrible. Oh God, no, don't fall down. Don't, 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 damn it. God, I've got notification noises going off everywhere. Thank you, uh, Derpy Gamer, for the follow. I appreciate that. If you're if you're here, it says I have two people chatting, but only one viewer. So if you are here, welcome and uh, thank you thank you for for subbing. Oh God. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh, this is, this challenge is rough. I mean, as it should be, it is the last one, but... Alright. We got this. We got this, yo. I am a retro enthusiast, damn it. I know how to fuel a... Rocket. Oh, hey, there you are. Uh, oh dear. I'm pretty sure the game just crashed. Yep. The game cr Well, that's a good sign. <laughs> the game crashed. Okay, well, while it's, uh, it's recovering... Uh, give me a moment, please. I am going to mute my Windows 10... Uh, notifications so that it doesn't go dong every time I get an achievement. Uh, I believe there's a way to mute these. Uh, hang on. Just a second here. Okay, there we go. Okay, I muted uh, Windows 10 notifications, so it should hopefully not do that. Let's try to get that challenge done. I just saw their uh, derpy. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try that in a little bit. Um, I'm recording this as well for my YouTube channel, so I don't want to uh, uh, spend too much time out of the game. But yeah, I will. Uh, I'll uh, toss you in later. 
you can if you want uh, you can you can follow at PX abstraction on Xbox live and uh, I should be able to see that so it should make it easier for me to, to add you later is if, if your gamer tag is the same as your your twitch name but yeah my uh, my Xbox damn it my Xbox live uh, name is the is just the same as my channel. Okay, I'm getting all of these challenges once. Because I would just want to see what happens. And then we'll move on to the next game. Oh, <laughs> well, no, I had a, I had a, the well, the, yeah, the game, <laughs> oddly enough, the game crashed on me, which was a little concerning. This uh, is not exactly a system stressing title, but uh, I was in the middle of a, of a run there and the game just cut, quit the dashboard, which was a little weird. So I took the opportunity to go and uh, silence my uh, notification center in Windows 10 because it, it makes, it gongs every time I get an achievement. So I didn't want that coming through on the, uh, on the stream. All right, cool. Yeah, no. If if you want to follow PX Abstraction, I'll uh, I'll be able to, to see it there. And when I, I get a, a chance, either when I take a break or or uh, finish up, I I can go add you in for sure. Like I said, I just don't want to. Well, I've only played like I I literally booted this up cold about mm, fifteen minutes ago. So this is the this is the first game in the collection. And it's pretty much the only one I've played. The presentation is slick. It's got a really snazzy intro, like CG intro. It's got this is a little special challenge mode uh, that it has. Uh, the way you navigate around the games is really cool. And actually, if you uh, as you complete challenges, you earn credits towards uh, unlocking like behind the scenes videos of like the early days of Rare and stuff. Which I like. I'm a retro nut. Like I run a retro YouTube channel. That's I'm doing this stream as research for my retro flashback YouTube show. Uh, and um, so that stuff just, I'm a total propeller head nerd for that stuff. I find that fascinating. And uh, in that respect, it's really cool. I mean, the, the collection of games that's in this, it's 30 games spanning all the way back from the ZX Spectrum to the Xbox 360. It's 30 full games for 30 bucks. And if you're an achievement nut, you can get 10,000 gamer score from this package. Like the value is crazy. Like, you really can't go wrong with that. Literally, if this was just like a crappy text menu that said, here's the 30 games, go, for $30, you couldn't beat it. But the effort they seem to have put into the presentation um, of this of this package, like, this was clearly done by a bunch of Rare employees who love their history. Yeah, you know what? People like to crap on Cameo, and I like that game. I played it uh, maybe about six months after the 360 came out, which is when I finally could afford one. And you know what? I like Cameo. I thought it was all right. You know, world-shattering, no, but it was good. And if Rare had gotten another shot at it to, to make another one, I, I think they could have done cool things with it. At least we're getting Sea of Thieves, though, which is finally a new original title from Rare that's not some dumb Connect Fitness thing. Sea of Thieves looks pretty neat. I, I hope that's good. Like a co-op, man-your-own-pirate-ship game, I have some buddies that are going to love playing that with me, I hope. I'm, I'm really looking forward to Sea of Thieves. Oh, this challenge is rough, man. Holy jeez. And I've got 30 games to take a look at. I'm going to be here a while. I am going to be archiving this video. I'm actually recording. I'm do, I'm streaming this in 720p 30 frames a second, but I'm recording it in 1080p 60. Uh, and that's the version that's going to go on YouTube. So there will be a full quality archive of this in addition to the shorter, probably 20, 30 minute retro flashback episode that I'll do to talk about the package. Um... This is more of a research stream, as people like Total Biscuit would call it. This challenge is that I have to fuel the ship and take off, and I don't have any guns. So it's it's kind of rough. I can do it, 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 I can do it. Don't tempt fate, Parallax! 
Yes! Did it! Haha! <laughs> So yeah, basically, I think there's... I'm not sure if it's three or four, but there's like a handful of achievements for each game. And it's, um... Uh, and it's like... They're all like, play the game for the first time, complete your first snapshot challenge, and then I think complete all the snapshot challenges. And then that additional achievement I got was for leveling up my theater patron thing, so I should have just unlocked something. Oh my god, there's 330 stamps in this game?! Oh my god, are you mental? I've unlocked a new video in the Rare Revealed Gallery. Yes, I would like to go see that now. This is the stuff that I'm really into. The rare, the, the behind the scenes videos. Because I, I just, I love this history stuff. Alright, let's see what this is. British people, they make a rare game. When people ask what makes a rare game or how you can recognize a rare game, I I, I think hope I don't get do copyright claim because of go, this. Oh, it's googly eyes. eyes on absolutely everything. Big googly eyes. Big googly eyes on everything. Like I said, value, it's, man. I don't think there you is can value in this package. Spot a rare game. I, it's, oh, that's a difficult. That's a hard one to answer because all the rare games are sort of different. We don't settle into a groove. We always are trying to find something new and exciting to, to create. And that's not just for the players, because we as developers like doing different things as oh, well. Oh, Banzo Kazooie it's, Nuts it's and Bolts. I barely ever works, played that game, well. and I really need to, because it is, it is good, man. What makes a rare game? Um, innuendo, um, British yes. humor. Yes. We very rarely did a game that was completely po-faced and straight-laced. We've always tried to make it so that it's going to entertain. Because that's what we're in the business If rare games have nothing else, it's personality. There's lots of ways to do that. But, you know, we like having a laugh, and we like everybody else that plays our games to have a laugh. You've got to come in and have fun every day, right? If you come in and start wearing suits and um, and uh, just acting a bit dry and just worrying about the numbers or worrying about this, then, then you're not going to create a fun experience. Everybody has fun. I don't think that you can make fun without having fun, and I think that that shows when you, when you play the games. Ultimately, I think that the core of what makes a rare game is the amount of love uh, and care and attention to detail that the people at Rare put into it. We would agree. We're a company of perfectionists. I don't think I've ever seen anyone quite obsess about a, a small bush that, <laughs> as, a, as a big tall tree or as a main character than we do. Going that extra mile, it was, it was something that everybody. These are really high, like Tim nicely Chris, produced like videos like, too. Um, like really convinced that. Going the extra mile and, and, and putting things in games that players don't expect was was what would make their titles stand out, and I think everybody everybody kind of took the. This lead collection that. clearly has the attention the to detail that other rare products have. I actually even recognised like as a gamer when I was sort of 12, 13. Everyone remembers the feeling when that rare logo just spins onto the screen. I remember feeling like. If you saw that logo on the box and at the start of the game when that logo would come up, you knew no matter what game it was, it was going to be your next like favourite game. Everything would come together to create this sort of I may, You know, I may play Cameo again can't really, through this collection. Can't really put your finger on I, I may, I may finish that game a second time. A rare quality. It's, it's been like, like rare nine game. years. It was a special. I don't know why. Kirk Hope! That sounds One awful, of the greatest composers you know, in <laughs> video games. You do, though. Before I came here, I don't think I could have answered that question because every game Rare made had a. Hmm. Doesn't had a actually say how long the videos it, are. Magical about it, something an X factor, if you like. And now that I am here and I've been here a few years, I think what makes a Rare game is the people that work at Rare and the culture of this place. We've got so many people that live, eat, sleep, and breathe video games. They've all got the same view. They all want a great game. They all love it, and they all want to play it. Even if it meant that you had to spend almost your entire life at, at work, it was that end result that you were trying to achieve. You know, you were trying to get, bring out the next. I don't know what it is about British I'm creative sorry, types talking obsessive. that just makes them sound so much more interesting and I believe that, to listen to. I think it shows in the product that um, if, if you love the project, project and you're kind of really passionate about it, you'll put a bit of your soul in, into it. 
And I think it, it sometimes comes at a cost, but it's always a worthwhile cost. I'm a firm believer that the, the games that come out of Rare are a reflection of the people that work on them at the time. They've all got this certain... I hope they do go into history and talk identity. to, like, the, and, and, and the Stamper brothers at some point. The team has the, the ownership um, and the kind of the freedom to basically to, to do what they want and to make the game that they want to make. You know, whatever ideas they come up with, um, we're, we're like, yeah, let's try it out. Let's throw it in the prototype. Let's see if it works. You know, we don't want to be restrictive. We don't want to be telling them what they have to do. It has to be the team that's creating this game, right? And so, so the kind of the humour... The there is a couple of bummers in, in they, emissions in this collection, though, which is a shame. Like, there's no Golden Eye because of crazy game, Bond licensing issues. And there's also no stuff, like, there's no Wizards and Warriors in this game. Like, if you're gonna do a job, sure that's a real bummer. I guess that's because that would require them to, like, emu like, emulate an NES, and maybe they... Well, no, RC Pro-Am is in this. Or did that come out in arcades? Because I think the problem is they can't emulate any old consoles. It has to be, like, PC or arcade games to make that work. So maybe, maybe that's why... All right, let's get back to the games. We got a lot to go through here, so. Next up, Lunar Jetman, 1983. I know of this game, I never played it. My God, I love this. I really do love this attention to detail, though. Like, just this whole collect, like just this menu system you can tell was done with love and care, you know what I mean? And there's the achievement for starting the game. So what am I doing here? Just... Driving and shooting? I don't know what that B is. Oh yeah, also, uh, every rare, every one of these games has cheats that you can turn on. By default, uh, every title has a rewind function. So if you hold left trigger... You can do that, uh, and some of the games have other cheats, like in uh, in uh, the first game uh, that I played, Jetpack. You could t there was an unlimited lives cheat you could turn on if you wanted. I'm not actually sure what my objective is here. Like I have the car, which I can't use, and I have that B thing. The alien base, I guess it's saying, is to the right, so. Okay, I, I gotta start this over. I don't know if I can, like, pick up that bomb or something. So, like, what do I do with that? I don't seem to be able to do anything with that. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I'm confused, if I'm honest. Can I pick this up? See, there's all these, like, parts and stuff, but I don't seem to have... I may actually need to look instructions up for this game. Okay, enter exit is Y. Pick up drop is B. Okay, well let's maybe... Uh... Let's start this over. Also, yeah, every game has save states. Okie dokie. The ZX Spectrum games still feel fast to me. Like, I don't know if I'm right about that, but they they feel... They, 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 the ZX Spectrum was not known for its incredible frame rate. And I don't know, the, the, I, might have to, I might have to go check a ZX Spectrum emulator, but these feel sped up to me. 
I don't know. I am just about out of fuel. Okay. So I can't jet now, I'm stuck on the ground. Hmm. And I'm about to run out of time. So B is pick up. So what does... What does the bomb do? The bomb just... Okay, so I'm just supposed to drop a thing, obviously. Okay, so... A missile has been launched from the enemy base. Your lunar rover is in danger. It is... Estimate I didn't get to read that nearly quick enough. Okay, game help. Hang on. What does the game help have to say? Lunar Jetman. How to play. Control Jetman as he seeks out missile bases dotted across an alien landscape and destroys them with explosives, all while keeping hostile forces at bay. The alien world is vast and dangerous. Fortunately, Jetman has to trust the Hyperglide Moon Rover to refuel his jetpack and help carry equipment to his next destination, as long as he can build a path using a supply of bridging units. Okay. So you can actually control the... Alright, so you can actually you can actually get into and control the uh, rover. All right. Hmm. Okay, I can get in the rover, but I can't actually drive it. This is a tough one, I have to say. Wait, I can pick up the teleporter? That's weird. Okay. There's a remarkable number of systems in here. Yeah, Jetpack Refueled I plan to get to. Uh, I actually owned and played the hell out of that game on the 360. Uh, that, was a, that was a great friggin' game. The original Jetpack is on here as well. Well, the original Jetpack is actually the first game that I was playing before. Uh, Jetpack is... Uh, refueled is great. Yeah, okay. We, uh, I've seen, yeah, we've seen enough of this one for now. We'll come... Uh, we'll move on here. This is a, there's a remarkable number of systems in that game. Alright, uh, let's just go back down the line then, since the 360 games are mostly near the end. So, Attic Attack, this game I have played a little bit. This game is brutally hard, if I recall correctly. This game is like, uh, kind of like Gauntlet, if I recall. It's like a, a, a light version of Gauntlet that was capable of running on the ZX Spectrum. And then, yeah, you had to wait for doors to open. It kind of played a little bit like Binding of Isaac <laughs> in its way. 
confuse you. It was all this little arena-based thing with, uh, yeah, with the enemies and, and different doors open and things like that. And ultimately, you wanted to try to stay in an area to get all the enemy kills you could to rack up the most score. But the areas got really, really tough later. Oh, God. That wasn't what I wanted to do. I'm not sure what that mushroom does. You got. And again, the, 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 I, I'm going to have to fire up a ZX Spectrum emulator. It, I, I, I may be wrong, but it feels like all these ZX Spectrum games have been sped up. Because ZX Spectrum games were very, were generally very, very slow. I wonder if there's anything I can do for that. Screen border, filter, rewind, infinite lies, revised ending? Hmm, huh, that's interesting. Because, yeah, I'm going to be really bummed if they sped up the emulation. Uh, like, I don't mind if they speed up emulation to make the game more palatable to modern players, as long as they give you the option to turn it off if you want to play the pure way. I, I'm going to be pretty bummed if they if they didn't do that. There's where I died. Yeah, the, as the chicken ticks down, that's your health. Okay, the mushroom hurts you. You don't want to touch the mushroom. There we go. Had some dinner. There we go. Got some health. This is actually pretty fun. I like this game. But again, I do not remember Attic Attack being this fast. Not at all. <laughs> Okay, so I can't go through either of these doors. I don't seem to be able to go through... Can I, uh... back out of here, or rather I'm going to save, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take a look at what the, uh, uh, the snapshots are. Keep your hunger bar above the halfway mark for 60 seconds. That shouldn't be too hard. Famous last words. off. There we go. Got my, my extra food. There we go. You know what the nice thing about this is, too, is the fact that I have, uh, because I have Windows 10 and can use Xbox One streaming, I can actually, um, 
just play this on my PC whenever I want to, which is nice. I don't always have to do this on the couch. Because I think I'm gonna work on I think I'm gonna work at some of these challenges. Those they're they're really fun. Now Saber Wolf, I know of the existence of this game. I know nothing about it. I've never played it. Explore the jungle and recover pieces of an ancient amulet, avoiding the jaws of Saber Wolf. So Saber Wolf is the enemy. Of music for ZX Spectrum. So this games were kind of sort of variations on a theme. Though I do like the multiple attack motions he has. Also, the factory high scores in this are insane. I don't know who set these, but it's mental. Two <laughs> percent! I am still not convinced this is, is running at proper play speed, though. I might have to Google that. Oh, there's like a button you can hold. Why are my controls backwards? Why are my controls backwards? Oh god. So... For sure. Have a good night, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Uh, I'm hoping to, but we'll we'll see what happens. I I can't guarantee it. I'm, I'm I've got some other stuff I'm working on too, but we'll we'll see what happens. I will try. Yep, I got it. All right, have a good night. I guess some of these things you can't kill, you can just turn them back. Yeah, it looks like I can't actually kill that, uh, that rhino. Funny, this game is called Saber Wolf, but it really has nothing to do with a wolf. What's that? Find every color of orchid over time. Alright. All 
right. Um, so what do we have for challenges in this one? Score 5,000 points in 60 seconds. Ooh. Now that I have nine lives. Yeah, I don't know. That sounds... Well, I don't know. Maybe not that tough. Maybe not that tough as I continue to get my ass whooped. Oh no, I'm going to totally do it. Cure Orchid while avoiding the yellow kind. Kick the bouquet. <laughs> I like that. Find a white orchid while avoiding the yellow kind. Taking a remarkably long time. Hooray, another one. Collect three orchids from three different jungle locations as quickly as possible. Okay, so when you're under the effect of an orchid, you're invulnerable? Is that the idea? Is that how it works? God, this is the one that wants my controls. Ah, oh, come on. I can do this.
we go. Visit at least 10 screens without losing a life. That actually is probably harder than it sounds. Spending too much time on this one. I'll come back to these later. Underworld. I don't know this one either. Um, leap, climb, and fight your way through an ancient labyrinth while avoiding very vicious monsters. Okay. This kind of looks like a little bit like Wizards and Warriors. Okay, I don't seem to be able to... Uh y, detach, B is fire, A is jump, X is pick up. I don't actually have a I don't actually have a gun. I also don't seem to be taking any damage. I also am seem to be able to walk without jumping. Like, the enemies here only seem to be inconveniencing me. None of them are actually hurting me. And I still don't have the ability to fire. Or die. Huh. Yeah, I think this one I might actually need uh, the game help. Okay, so if I... Okay, so yeah, that is how it works. He, uh... If he falls... Uh... 
too far, that's how he dies. The monsters just get in your way. Oh wow, I already won. This is interest this game's actually interesting simply for the fact that the enemies don't actually hurt you. Like that in and of itself is kind of innovative. Well, this challenge was dead easy. <laughs> More than doubled it. That's pretty funny. Alright. Underworld's kind of cool. I like that one. So, Night Lore. I don't know anything about this one. I played most of Rare get Rare's games on the NES, and unfortunately it's none of the NES ones on here. Uh, explore Night Lore Castle and seek out the ingredients to cure your werewolf curse. I can't read that because the background's in the way. Oh wow, this looks like Crystal Castles. Wait, what was the other achievement I got? So I can jump, I can't fire, so is this just purely explore explorative? And now I'm a werewolf. Can the werewolf fight? No, the werewolf doesn't appear to be able to fight either, so... What's the main difference here? What is the... I'm like riding on sparkles. Alright, hang on, I gotta look at the controls. B is pick up and drop. Oh wow, you can put a scan line filter on it. That looks like crap. That scan line filter, yeah, that scan line filter looks like hot ass. So this is slowing down like ZX Spectrum games do. Oof, this is rough. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Like, I'm looking around for the curse, obviously. Or the, the cure to the curse. But, like, I don't know what the benefit is of being a werewolf as opposed to not. Poor. Yeah, well, screw you too, game. Just quickly check the, uh... Snapshots for this one. 
Visit at least six rooms within 90 seconds? Well, that doesn't seem too hard. not sure this is um i haven't actually shoot i haven't actually played uh i never played this particular game before but yeah this is part of a rare cole uh, collection that just came out for the the xbox one I have to check though. Some of the the ZX Spectrum games that are in this collection feel like they're sped up, and like I may be misremembering the ZX Spectrum, but I don't know. It doesn't feel right to me. I'm just doing a challenge here. trying to go through all these games, but there's, um, I ran into one problem, which is that this collection, this rare collection has games spanning all the way from the ZX Spectrum up to the, um, up to the, uh, 360, and all the 360 games are running through the Xbox One, like, backwards compatible mode, and they're all, they all need title updates, and none of the title updates are downloading, so... I'm not sure if I'm actually going to be able to uh, play those, which really annoys me. Uh, gun Fright. Let's check this out. This looks like a Hogan's Alley-ish kind of deal. Yep, that's pretty much exactly it. It's Hogan's... It's Hogan's ass, Hogan's alley. Except... This is probably way easier to play with an analog stick than it was back on the... The other thing. Oh, wait, no, it's a mix. Whoa, what? Why did the price for horses go up? This is really weird. But... Did I walk into that lady and get killed? Okay, and like, if I shoot someone I'm not supposed to, I lose bounty? I don't even know what's going on here. Like, Rare's games were always kind of strange, but like... Okay, what are the controls for this? Change view, fire, fire. Okay, that's it. Okay, so you can, like, change the way you're looking. So, obviously, I guess my goal is to find the guy what looks like that grumpy cat with a friggin' tumbleweed on his head. And then shoot him? I guess? I don't... What do you... And apparently don't touch anyone? I am... I... I don't... I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. 
Like, everybody looks the same. How am I supposed to know who I'm shooting at? Like, what is that? Is that, like, the guy's like, ah! Are you, like, pointing to where the enemy is? All I see is a bunch of ladies who all look exactly the bloody same to each other, and if I touch any of them, I apparently die. <laughs> Can't say I get that one. Nope, I don't get that. I, that one would require more research. I'm gonna, uh... The first snapshot of these is usually easy, so... Shoot at least 35 money bags within 45 seconds. That I can do. At least the beginning snapshots in this game are usually pretty simple. Okay. All right, let's move on from that one. Now slalom. This one I know. It's also bloody terrible at it. Holiday makers. Oh, that's such a British term. Square wave, Mount Nasty. Now, I do just want to double check the um, jump, 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 change mode. Okay. I'm still bummed, though, that there are, like, rare NES games on here, but, like, no Wizards and Warriors, no, you know, no, uh, what was it called, Anticipation, that game, that, like, weird board game, Pictionary kind of dealy they did? That was a, yeah, I, I, I'm bummed those got left out. I, I don't think Wizards and Warriors was, like, I'm pretty sure Rare owned that. I don't think it was made by Nintendo. No pinbot, but obviously there's there's not going to be pinbot because that that would be licensing hell. The same reason there's no golden eye in this collection because it's just going to cost too much. But yeah, slalom is that's a very weird victory pose. Huh. kilometers an hour, eh? I guess you could get up to that speed. I don't know what happens. Do I get, like, time penalized if I miss the flags, or... Because it doesn't seem to be... It, it goes gading, but I think you just get bonus points for the number of flags you complete. Because it's, it's... Your main goal is the time. 
I wonder if this has ever been done in an SGDQ. This would probably be a crazy game to speedrun. And you know it could totally be done. Ugh, controls are... The controls are really touchy, though. Can I use the D-pad? Oh, I can. Okay. That's probably better, given that this came off the NES. Slalom. People know what slalom is. So, uh, let's check the challenge mode out. Finish a qualifying run in 60 seconds or less. That actually, hmm. I wonder. It might be a tough one. Well, qualifying runs, you don't actually have to get through the flags. It's kind of just go balls to the wall and avoid the moron tourist skiers. be harder than I thought for an entry level challenge. All right, I did it just barely. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is what I'm talking about right here. RC Pro Am Muddas. Oh yeah. And the game crashed again. For a very simple emulation collection, I must say this is the game is very unstable. That is the second time it has kicked me back to the desktop or to the dashboard this evening. That's a little worrisome, <laughs> if I do say so myself. If you're gonna crash, at least let me skip the logos. Thank you. Don't you keep, keep me away from my RC Pro-Am, you hear? This game was actually remarkably challenging because of the way it controlled, but God, it was good. Played a lot of this with uh, friends of mine. Because it controlled like the Leland... Uh the Leland, uh, like, truck racing games, except you didn't have full view of the track. You were... You only had, um... You didn't have full view of the track. You only had a very, very restricted view of what was in front of you, but you were still steering it the same way, which made it really challenging. Also, the AI in this game was a bitch. It was really nasty. You basically had to memorize the tracks because you couldn't see where they were coming, where they were going to be coming up, where the, the turns were coming up until you were right on them, but the computer knew. Because, I mean, there is that map at the bottom, but, I mean, you can't, you can't, you, you realistically can't look down at it. You're moving too quickly. So you basically had to memorize, uh, you basically had to memorize all the turns. Still a damn good game, though. 
conditions very wet. Good. Oh god, right, speed ups. Oh right, power. Yes, that's well shit. That's right, you you could uh yeah, you could get weapons and shoot at dudes. Bitch. Yeah, suck it. This is my race. I wanna I want one first place finish, goddammit. Oh you son of a This game was so mean. Yeah, and you just got these upgrades. I think it was arbitrarily, right? Like, I, I'm not able to pick those upgrades. It's just saying, here's here's your upgrades. Yeah, I'm stealing all your power-ups, bees notches. Yeah, my house. God damn it. And Cobra Triangle was kind of... That's the other thing that there's an omission of here. There's Cobra Triangle as well, which was kind of like, um... Basically this on water. Which was also really good, but then we... Yeah, I don't believe that's in this collection either. Like, there, there are some very odd omissions in this collection. And I don't know if it's because of licensing issues, or just because they're games that Rare was not as proud of. Because, yeah, no Cobra Triangle, no, um... They have RC Pro Am 2, but no Cobra Triangle, no Wizards and Warriors. And I am 99% sure Rare owned those games. Like, I don't think Rare. Like, Rare made games for, like, Nintendo platforms and stuff, but I don't. I think Rare almost always owned all their own IP. So, I'm not sure. Um. So I'm not sure why they couldn't have put that in here, but... Yeah, the, I forgot how just vicious the AI was in this game. It was really tough. This game required a lot of practice and a lot of course memorization if you wanted to succeed at it. No, F you, 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 F you. Come back here, you son of a bitch. And I love too that it's like, it's called RC Pro Am and you're racing RC cars, but it's completely irrelevant that they're RC cars. It was just an excuse to make it miniaturized racing. And that's it for me. I did like the fact that this game didn't require you to win every race though. Like, you could still succeed, you just wouldn't get as many points if uh, you just didn't have to, to come in last, which I, I always liked. All right, well, let's go check the, uh, the, um, snapshots. Grab all 28 of the stars scattered around the track before the race ends. Ouch, that actually sounds pretty rough. Because the computer's gonna keep racing. Oh, but it's four. Okay, it's four laps, so that's not that bad.
What's the one I'm missing? There it is. Hooray! That was really lame. Uh, but I'll take it. Oh, no, wait, we did have... Okay, we did get Cobra Triangle. Derp! I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, RC Pro-Am basically with boats is what this was. Much more combat-focused, though. This is a good game. Double check the controls for this one. X is get power up, A is accelerate. Oh, right, and this had like Gradius style, like sort of power ups. Yeah, it had like a Gradius style power up system where your goal was to get uh, more power ups, and if you if you got more power ups and used them, uh, you got more abilities. So yeah, it was very much like Gradius. This was more than RC Pro Am with boats. I was being I was I was definitely being reductionist. Wow, way to fail, Parallax. Speaking of games that need to be speedrun... Oh yeah, that was like the EMP thing that slowed you down. I think this was just... Was this that I had to just get all the pods, or was it, uh... Just get as much as I could within the time limit? Oh, okay, yeah, just as much as I could within the time limit. Yeah, the mines were very... That's right, the mines, uh... Were different. Problem is, I don't remember. Oh, yeah! That's how this worked. That's right, you had to stun the, the guy so he would not take the mines back from you. And then you had to deposit them there. Yeah, I remember this. Oh, God, how did I forget this game? This game, I gotta do an independent retro flashback on this game at some point. This game was so good. It was also a bitch, like most rare games, but... Get off me, asshole. At least that guy doesn't have as good a turning radius as me. Hey, Dougie. Oh my god, this game is so good! Cobra effing triangle, man! I love this game. Right. The wood also sucked ass. This was basically like Tubin. Come here, 
you son of a... <laughs> Piss off. Oh my god, I hate these things. Oh yeah, there is a rewind function too, but... I ain't no filthy cheater. Alright, well, we're gonna... I'm gonna go check out the uh, snapshot mode, but man... Oh, Cobra effing triangle, man! Yeah! So good! Such a good game! Oh, I love Cobra Triangle! Race through the desert and score at least 5,000 points in 60 seconds. Pfft, ain't nothing. I'm just going to try to do the first snapshot in each of these games because I, I, I like to see what the, the snapshots involve and also the, the first snapshot is an easy achievement. So... <laughs> There's a, a, Every one of these games has an achievement for playing the game the first time and then... Whoa! <laughs> and then... Uh, uh, getting your first uh, challenge completed. This is the only thing I hate is that once you shoot the power-ups off the back of the boats, you still have to, uh, they still keep going for some reason, which makes you wonder why they were being, uh, pulled on the back of a boat to begin with, but... I got this. I so got this. Look, feel my firepower, you bastards. That's what I get for bragging. sure I don't impact anything. That's kind of what's boning me here. And not hitting the ramps. This is actually remarkably difficult for the first challenge. Yeah, if you had unlimited lives for this 60 seconds, this would be easier, but the fact that you've got to do all this in, in one life is uh, harder than it looks. Well, there we go, I did it. See how high I can get, though, before I run out of time. Because all these uh, snapshots are leaderboarded, of course. Alright, next up, I believe, is uh, Snake Rattle and Roll. Yes, sir. Solar Jetman, I won't spend too much time on because I um, actually did a retro flashback on that already. So. played a lot of snake rattle and roll but yeah this was just the case of you ate stuff and it like it grew you out right I believe is that how it worked is that how it worked Seems something like that. And then, yeah, you have to weigh a certain amount to get on that thing. Is that 
good enough? There we go. That's my doorway out. I dig this game. those mushrooms though. Man, this game does not mess about in later levels. Okay, don't touch the spikes. Controls for this are definitely weird because it's a diagonal perspective thing, but it's, uh... But it... You know what? It's alright. I, I, I dig what this is... I dig what this is trying to do. Alright. <laughs> Hold? That's weird. What are the snapshots? Twenty five hundred points in forty five seconds? <laughs> Nothing. Well, there we go. <laughs> See if I can uh, top the leaderboard. Smack it at leaderboard. Slap it at leaderboard. Alright, next up is Solar Jetman. We're gonna look at Solar Jetman very quickly. Because I did do a video on that and we have a lot of other games to cover. Though, of course, we do have the little problem of... The, I don't know if any of the 360 games actually work. So, we may have a problem there, but we'll see. Oh, Solar Jetman. You know what? I might just go straight to the snapshots for this one. Collect all 10 gems from the Cyber Zone? Oh my god. This is... All 10 gems from the Cyber Zone is a bitch. Are you kidding me? Oh, but it's before fuel expires. Okay. Well, that's not as bad. You had like friggin' two seconds yet to, to, to complete this in the base game. controller batteries. Uh, one second, guys. I'll be right back. Alright, back at it. Sorry about that. <laughs> 
Now, is this the NES version? I'm actually not sure if it is. Oh, no, it is. <laughs> Sampled every Jetman game in the collection. Well, okay. Yep, this is the uh, this is Solar Jetman, all right. That's cool. All right, well, like I said, not going to put too much time into this uh, because there is a video on my channel about it. Uh, so go check that out if you want to know more. Next up is Digger T Rock. Don't know anything about this game. Alright, right. NES game again. Hey, it's Minecraft. Hey, Rare, Notch stole your idea. <laughs> Pretty kick-ass music. Except it's taking health for me to kill those guys. Ding, 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 ding. Problem is, I don't know how to... Okay, how do I jump? How do I... I don't seem to be able to jump high enough to get up there, so I'm not sure. All right, Spithy, thanks for hanging out, buddy. Have a good night. Oh, that's why. Oh, that's unfortunate. You can't jump when you're sliding down anything. Oh, is that the way out? Oh god, it's Boulder Dash. Kind of. That's morbid. It's a morbid way to die. What a weird game. This is kind of like Spelunker meets Boulder Dash? Kind of? What the... Okay, was that like a secret room? Man, what a weird game. It's a neat game, though. I like this. I, I, I like when he can't hit something, he just goes ding 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 ding. It's cute. to attack. game. Pretty neat, though. I like it. All 
All right, well, I'm gonna try the challenge mode on this and then we'll move on. This stream has already gone on quite some time. I'm unlocking a lot of those rare, uh, rare videos, the, the video sections. Dodge the boulders in the crumbling cave and grab at least four pieces of treasure. All right, well, this should be easy. <laughs> you fail. You are dead. Aha! I beat you. I bested you. I best you, video game. Next up. Oh god, the original Battletoads. Jesus. I can't imagine what the high-end challenge... I bet the high one of the highest-end challenges in this is like, beat that stupid surfing section that is literally impossible on your first try or something stupid like that. I mean, yeah, Battletoads. Such a weird franchise. Such a weird video game. Yeah, okay. Such a bloody weird video game. Basically, play th this was basically Rare's attempt to make a techno style beat em up. And I mean, in that respect, I think they probably did alright. The Technos formula was not all that revolutionary. Well, I think we get the idea here. This is Battletoads. Which is, I don't think is a bad thing. I do wish we had bat the, the, the insane Battletoads and Double Dragon team-up game, but speaking of licensing problems... Oh, I took him over. I did, you could do that? I didn't remember that. Take him over friggin' Golden Axe style. Alright. Let's back this out. Check the first challenge.
15,000 points in 60 seconds. <laughs> That's basically f three enemies in a bit. There it is. I bet the top leaderboard for this challenge right now is like 150,000 or something insane. Flies on you. Right. RC Pro Am 2. We played uh, some of the first one. It's RC Pro Am, but better, pretty much. Can't stop the signal. That's a great achievement name. I don't know if I ever actually played RC Pro-Am 2. I'm wondering if it was as br Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, I wonder if it was as... The AI was as brutal, uh... As it was in the first one, and it... Kinda seems that way? I mean, brutal in that they actually know how to play the game, and they race, like, they race, like, properly. But r even right out the get-go. Not as big on the sound design in this game. Rare's titles on systems like the NES never took full advantage of the sound or anything like that. They weren't like Capcom or Konami in that respect. They did interesting graphical stuff, but they were never that big on the sound front. Alright, so yeah, I can upgrade things and, and whatnot, so... Yeah, this is uh, this is RC Pro M2, which is cool, but uh, we kind of get the the gist of that already. So, let's see if there's an easy snapshot we can do here. Win the drag race. Alternate between A and B buttons to accelerate. Oh God. This is when my f fight stick, which has a turbo button on it, would be really nice. Freaking kidding me. Ah, my controller slipped. <laughs> oh, I need my Mad Cat's fight stick right now, which has turbo turbo on it. I will wreck you, video game. This is not how drag races work in real life! <laughs> Alright, there we go. <laughs> Battletoads, the arcade game. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Oh, KI Gold. That's gonna be a good one. Won't spend too much time here, either. Uh, this is Battletoads, the arcade game, which is Battletoads, but snazzier. Oh my god, I'm getting so many achievements tonight. This is crazy. I 
If I recall, this game was also really tough, but not not as stupid as uh, not as stupid as uh, Battletoads on the NES, and it looked really really good for the time. As a 16-bit arcade machine, it was pretty good. remember if this kept score or not. I actually don't remember if it did. Sounds like you're disgusted by eating flies there, uh... What's his name? The mode 7 of kicking guys off the screen was always cool. Aw. Oh. Dead, son. So yeah, it, I mean, it's a better looking Battletoads game because it's the arcade game rather than the NES game. But you, you, you pretty much get the idea here. Seems to be emulated pretty well. Alright, once again, let's check out the challenge. We're going to start getting into the uh, N64 era stuff soon. Get rid of 15 as quickly as possible, and they won't attack. KI Gold, here we go, baby. Jeff Gersman, you are wrong. Killer Instinct was a good fighting game. Screw you. Let your body rock to the killer groove. Listen to the soundtrack, man! Oh, come on, I beat you, Orchid. Screw you. I, I mean, I, I will admit it's transition to full 3D. Maybe not, 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 uh, not, not positively wonderful. I, I will admit. Continue. 
All right. Oops. I gotta at least win one fight here. I don't know what the problem is. I, I don't know what the block key is. Oh wow, and it does have a move list. Well, it says it does, or is it from here? Yeah, there it is. Oh no, these are the milestones. Okay, wow, there's way more milestones in this game beyond just the snapshots, it's the challenges. Like there's the game is full of the the game is full of uh, challenges in general. It looks like. So yeah, the game the game has a has a boatload of uh, just general challenges to beat. That's why there's 330 milestones. Good lord. I do that? I don't know who triggered that move. Oh, screw you. I won that. I gotta win at least one. Hoping I can mash out a combo of some description because I don't really know it. Oh, there's one. Didn't seem to do much damage though. Yeah, I definitely think the Super Nintendo one was better. This, this transition to sort of pseudo 3D, not so hot. Oh, I got a hyper combo. There we go. This arcade cabinet was one of the ones that actually had a hard drive in it. It wasn't just a, it wasn't a, uh, a pure cartridge ROM. It actually, the, the disc actually, it, the, the game, most of the game data actually lived on an encrypted hard drive. get the idea of this one. Oh, there's no challenges with this one. Interesting. Blast Core. Did I play this? I don't remember. This is like a building. This was kind of like Rampage, if I remember correctly. Say this about rare games, they always knew how to make everything seem different.
This feels like something that would have come out of Midway. You can do this. Is this like playing like rednecks music? Considering I'm paving the path for, like, nuclear annihilation, am I the only one who thinks this seems a little weird? Okay, good. Shut up. Let me play. So yeah, th there's stuff, there's critical stuff that you have to destroy, but if you can destroy the other stuff too, it gives you extra points. Okay. I mean, why not, right? And like... Why is this playing this weird redneck music when I'm clearing the path for a nuclear missile? Okay, so already use an additional buildings I can still do. I don't know where what an RDU is or where I get it, but can I run people over? No. This is a goddamn weird thing. Oh, I can get out of my thing. I know it said I could change vehicles, but... No trouble at all. Really weird video game. Like, a really, really weird video game. Okay. Um... So interestingly, yeah, there's no challenges here either. I guess because maybe in these versions of the game they couldn't make, like in their arcade ROMs or whatever, they couldn't make them work. It looks like the the chat there's no challenge in uh, any of there's no uh, snapshots in any of the games be in in this era, which is kind of a bummer. I was never a big Banjo Kazooie guy, but oh, this is probably trying to launch the Xbox 360 port, isn't it? which I've had lots of problems with those so far, so we'll see if this works. Oh, no, this one's working. So yeah, when you play any of the games that came out on the Xbox 360, it literally just launches them into um, this backwards compatibility mode that is not actually out yet. Like, if you're in the preview program, you... Uh, can have access to this, but normal people can't. But if you own Rare Replay, you get pre-built-in access to uh, the titles included in Rare Replay, which seems really weird to me, but it works. I presume this is downloading the 360 VM to my Xbox One right now. I'm, I'm guessing that's what that means. When I tried to run Jetpack Refuel before, it said Jetpack Refuel needs an update and then timed out trying to get it. So I don't know if it's still going to do that or maybe it was trying to do this. Um, but I'm guessing this is downloading the 
like necessary software to spin up a 360 VM right now. I'm hoping it doesn't have to do this every time you run one of these games. But the cool thing about this package is that all the 360 games are uh, included as standalone things as well. So you can run them independently of Rare Replay if you if you want. Uh, but if you run them within Rare Replay, there's milestones for completing like some of the achievements within the games and things like that, which I think is pretty cool. So... I'm hoping it only has to do this once. Also, the fact that it got most of the way through the process installed is not very encouraging either. Oh, no, there it goes. I'm looking down at my router to make sure that it's actually retrieving it. Yeah, there it is. It's just launching into Xbox Live Arcade. The problem now is I'm going to have all these zero-point achievement games on my, or low achievement games on my profile, which is going to hose my TA ratio. I'm not necessarily going to spend a lot of time on the 360 titles, because these are just going to play like 360 games. So, the, it's not very hard to find out about that, and these are all games that came out in recent years that will all have, like, um, uh, you know, they'll all have coverage already, so I don't think I'm going to spend that much time on them. But yep, this is just Banjo-Kazooie, the 360 version. But yeah, I wasn't that big on this game, so I don't know. They did make an N64 game look a lot better, though. I have to give them credit for that. Yep, it's Banjo-Kazooie. So now what I wonder is how do we get out of here? Can't skip all this. So, yeah. 360 version of Banjo Kazooie. You pretty much know what you're getting into with that, so. I guess we just switch back to this. Oh, it has to run it again whenever. Ugh. So it has to exit out to the 360 games, I guess, and then it has to go back into this one. So I guess it that's why you can run the 360 games independently, because it can't run them alongside this game. And I guess somehow the game's able to analyze your saves and know when you've completed milestones within those games. I mean, I 
certainly hope so. It's funny that it runs the 360 version of Banjo-Kazooie, even though that game, it's still listed chronologically as earlier, which I find kind of amusing. So yeah, there's no, there's no snapshots with these either, so the snapshots are only in the old games. It's kind of a bummer. Jet Force Gemini. I heard of this game. I never played it because I never owned an N64. I played very few N64 games. This definitely looks up -rezzed, though. Way less blurry than the N64. Alert, alert. Why does your ship have fuzzy dice? Oh, 
Give me something to shoot. Whoa, that was weird. Is there anything I can shoot at? Camera is not good. Stop tutorializing. So it's a weird, like, third-person shooter with really crappy targeting. And no manual camera control, by the way. Okay, well, we get the idea of this, so that's Jet Force Gemini. Eh, I don't know about that one. Perfect Dark, the original. Oh, this is also the 360 version. Right, earn at least 15 gamer score in this game. Yeah, this is also the 360 ver version. I forgot this got a re-release on, uh, on 360. Now, please don't have to get my 360 console info again.
Okay, good. You don't. Joanna, the really it's low, good to see you. With a really Come with me. FLV. I'll walk you around the training rooms. Yeah, I remember this was a pretty good conversion. Oh, uh, hi. Hey. If you hear any info, let me know. Okay. The information center is through this door. Oh yeah, nobody, uh, nobody's mouth moves in this, that's right. In here we have the device lab. Hello. I just don't have the patience for this. And the music is really over. version of Perfect Dark, so people have probably seen this before, so you get the idea with that one. Not too much to research with that, really. Oh, uh, I wish there was a way you could just jump out of this, that, and go right back to the menu position you were at, though, that you have to restart this from scratch and go through the logos and stuff is pretty crap. Why do you have to sync data? Okay, well, you did it anyway, so. Banjo Tui, honestly, I don't even think we need to bother with that. It's the second banjo game, so we know what that's about. Um, grab, yeah, Conquer, Conquer's Bad Fur Day and Grab by the Ghoulies are, I basically never played Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I, I know this was a game that was marketed on how, like, crazy, edgy, and crap it was, but, uh, <laughs> but it was also, people thought it wasn't that good a game.
Oof, low frame rate. Wow, did it run this bad on the N64? Microsoft Studios? Conker's Bad Fur Day was put up by Nintendo. I guess it... Oh, I guess it, it probably said Nintendo Presents in that originally, so they had to take it out. supposed to happen here? Ah. Well, there I am. Conquer the king. King of all the land. Who'd have thought that? But how did I come to this, I hear you say? And who are those strange fellows that surround my throne? I hear you also say. Well, it's a long story. Come closer, and I'll tell you. It all started yesterday. And what a day that was. It's what I call... A bad fur day. Uh-huh. Guys, and they're off tomorrow to some, I don't know, fight some war somewhere. Anyway, um, I'll see ya. <laughs> Lo love you. <laughs> I think she bought it. Conquer, put the phone down. Oh, oh, uh, right. Who's round with it? Yours. What, again? Okay. Can someone lend me a fiver? Uh, uh, I don't feel so good now. Uh, can this be skipped? You guys enjoy yourself and all that, and I'll probably see you sometime next week. I gotta go home. Uh, I'll go this way. Oh, oh, no, that's the toilets. Uh, go this way. Yeah, that's bad. Oh, uh, doesn't look too good tonight. Ooh, I'm gonna sec. Lovely. Uh, sorry about that, old chap. Gotta go. Oh, this is a crazy long intro. Uh, can't quite make it out. 
But anyway, it seems pretty familiar to me. This way, I suppose. Really can't skip this. More milk, sire. Fresh and white. Yes. Okay. So yeah, this is another sort of open world, uh, or, you know, wander around kind of thing, not unlike a banjo or one of those things. So yeah, it's basically that. And yeah, it was a weird... I remember it was like a, yeah, it was a, it was a really weird game. I mean, the emulation seems okay. The intros ran... Those those cinematics were running real rough. But it seems to be... Uh, it seems to... this It seems to be running okay now. So, yeah. Alright. I don't know. I might play Conker's Bad for a Day someday, but... Not really interesting me that much, to be honest with you. Alright, let's check grab by the ghoulies real quick. I'm gonna blast through the rest of these, mostly just to see how they are. Like, anything from the 360 area, there's already been lots of coverage of, so... It's not really a big deal. But yeah, this has been going for a long time. I definitely have a good idea of what I want to talk about in my uh, video of this. This ran at 60 FPS on the original Xbox, but... Hmm. 
Sure, why not? I'm sure that's fine. Okay, skip the intro, seriously. stick combat Is this a brawler? I did not know that's what grabbed by the ghoulies was. It's like Rare's attempt at a Devil May Cry. It looks like this was, yeah, Rare's attempt at, like, Devil May Cry. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm get it. I'm sure this didn't look this good in the original Xbox, and I'd be surprised if it ran at 60 mm -hmm. frames a second, so... Uh, oh, yeah. hmm. So there you have it. Hmm. Um, that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's uh, grabbed by the ghoulies. Cameo. Now, I'm curious about this. I am I actually liked Cameo, uh, but here's the thing I wonder. If this boots into Xbox 360 mode... Yep. It, it, no, it remembers all the achievements I already got in that game. So, I got a whole whack of milestones for beating that game already. So, yeah, if you've already beaten a game, uh, or have a whole bunch of uh, gamer score... Uh, you just get the milestones. So yeah, I have 8 out of 10 milestones. The next one is earn at least 675 gamer score, and I'm guessing the rest of them are 
Earn at least, okay, earn at least 750. So yeah, if I were to get uh, a couple of other achievements, I'd get, uh, I'd get that. So that's really cool uh, that it, it's able to actually just read your achievements and know that you've, um, know that you've gotten uh, that stuff already and just reward you for it. I, I think that's pretty, pretty neat. So I'm just going to boot this up and see how it looks and runs. I'm not going to play it very much because I have beaten this game already. I actually did think it was all right. Uh, and like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the 360 games. If you want to know more about the 360-based games in this collection, you can go look up coverage of them elsewhere. Um, needless to say, like people are happy about the Banjo-Kazooie games. Why did I unlock a, a zero-point achievement? Um, how do you bring up... How do you bring up the 360 guide, I wonder? Ah, uh, okay, it's hold both. Um, I don't know what that zero-point achievement was that I got. You downloaded the winning skins from the Cameo Design a Skin competition. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, my saves for this, if I even have them, are still on my old 360. They're not in the cloud, so... Uh... Yeah, this looks pretty much exactly like Cameo. But yeah, needless I among the clouds. Needless to say, a lot Cameo of the 360 games in this are, are good. Like Cameo is good. Banjo, the Banjo Kazooie updates are good. Perfect Dark update is good. If you're into those games, uh, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts is fantastic. Perfect Dark Zero, maybe not so much. Between the trolls and the But if you like those games, yeah, they're they're on here. So Cameo is their only hope. Well, cameo. Yeah, so there it is. Yeah, there's cameo. And yeah, I still thought cameo was an alright game, so that's cool. So I'm gonna quickly run through the 360 games and then call it a stream. But, uh, honestly, uh, I, the collection's a little bit crashy, and I wish it did have a little bit more, um, uh, uh, I do wish it had a little bit more in terms of customization options for aspect ratios and stuff, but that's mostly because I'm a friggin', uh, emulation nut, so, uh, that's not really a big deal. Um, and yeah, some of the omissions uh, from this, like Wizards and Warriors and obviously Goldeneye, are kind of a bummer. Um, but overall, just the sheer amount of games you get in this collection is insane. Like, there is so much value in here for $30, it's unbelievable. Yeah, Perfect Dark Zero, I have never played this game. Generally, I was told it was pretty bad. Uh, you know, it was kind of a lousy first-person shooter. Uh, but it was a launch game, so everybody played it. I might go through it someday. It's nice to see that the emulation layer, though, for the backwards compatibility works so well. <laughs> it definitely does, I have to say. 
pretty impressed with that. So it's Samsung product placement. Okay. Watch yourself, Joe. You're on Datadyne property now. Our employer wants you to break in undetected. Mega corporations don't take kindly to intruders. Security is tight. Cameras, laser tripwires. Nothing you can't deal with, but I'm on hand just in case. Let's start with that spider bot up there. It's locked down the door for repairs. No time to hang about. Shoot it and get out. What is it with those things? Got one. And the other. Okay, get going. Alright, well, you know what? This runs, so hey. <laughs> Maybe I'll play that at some point, I don't know. I generally heard it wasn't great, but who's to say? Alright. Only got a few more games here, and then, uh, yeah, I've been at this for over three hours, so this is going to be a hell of a research stream. Viva Pinata, I'm sure it runs fine. I also will have a... Did I only get one achievement in that game? Wow. I found Viva Pinata really cute, but also very cumbersome to play.
It's party time! Viva Pinata! Filled with fun! Filled with fun! Yeah! Don't be I don't know if I have a save for this or not. Welcome to picturesque Pinata Island. God, right. Rare loved their Comic Sans. Get set for Viva Pinata. Mm. Yep. No, it look it's working, and yeah, this it still looks good. God, the art in this game is good. the journal. When you finish talking to me, press X to open. Yeah, okay. So that works. Viva Piñata, a game that everybody loved but nobody bought. So I think we're just going to skip over the sequel because it's more of the same and uh, I'm sure it's going to run just as well and it's getting really late. So it's going to take me forever to put this video up on YouTube, so... Alright, let's just take a look at Nuts and Bolts quick. It's weird that Jetpack is, for whatever reason, the only game that needed an update. Everything else in this collection just runs. Which I find highly strange. Once upon a time, there lived a heroic bear called Banjo, a rather loud bird called Kazooie, and an unpleasant witch called Gruntilda. When Banjo's sister was kidnapped, the bear and bird rescued her from the depths of the witch's lair, overcoming many perils and speech impediments. And the jetpack update tumbled died. Her doom. What but is wrong with that game? Persistent. And surprising nobody, the old hag soon rose from her grave for round two. Our brave heroes once again stood in her way, and this second showdown ended just as badly for Gruntilda, who really should have quit while she was ahead. Many years have passed, and peace The backwards compatibility really mountain. chugs whenever the she overlay's on screen. The bird, 
It's know, weird that they put this out when that's technically still in beta. So yeah, this looks good. Looks like it's still working. But yeah, my jetpack is still not working. Oh, there it is. No, installation stopped. So yeah, it's 30 frames a second, but it's uh, running good. So yeah, I don't know what the hell is wrong with Jetpack. That's really annoying, because that was one of the games I wanted the most out of this collection. And it's broken, which really ticks me off. Maybe I could reinstall it, but... Yeah, I might not be able to show that one off. That one might have to wait until... Oh, there we go. Now it says ready to start. Perfect. All right. Let's do jetpack quickly. Last game of the evening. So yeah, for those who missed it, uh, this w this whole stream will go up in 1080p 60 on my YouTube channel. Um, it will be an accompaniment to my retro flashback of this game, which will be a more condensed version of the collection, like just talking about the collection in general uh, in a much more um, succinct, analytical way. But this test stream, this research stream was like three hours. Uh, but this will go up as an accompaniment. So if you want to see a much more deep dive into the collection, You'll be able to do that. I like this game. Yeah, I want to try retro and just see. I don't know. Maybe, may, okay, maybe the, I, I might be wrong. Maybe the ZX Spectrum did run at 60 frames a second. Okay, I guess I was wrong. All right. What achievements am I missing in this game? Complete all 16 levels in retro, score 500,000 points playing multiplayer over Xbox Live. I bet there's nobody doing that. That would be interesting, though. Actually, th now that this collection's out, maybe somebody is. Hey, there's one. see if we can play. I don't think I ever played this online with anybody. You had way more shooting capabilities here. This is what I loved about it. You had, you, yeah, way more shooting ability uh, uh, in this one. And the movement was much more smoother.
not that good at this game, but apparently. I think it was, what was the achievement? 100,000 points playing multiplayer? See, I don't like the fact that they tied challenge objectives to that, because, like, no one's gonna be playing, like, there's barely anyone playing this multiplayer now, and sure as hell, no one's gonna be playing this in, like, a week online. And if they're tying the, uh, you know, challenge progress to, and he left because he was losing. So, hang on, what's the achievement? Play with another infected player. 500,000 points. Wow, yeah. That's not gonna happen. But, like, it, 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 like it, it, this game has achievements tied to a multiplayer community that essentially doesn't exist anymore. So, if you're gonna. Like, if you're gonna force multiplayer achievements in order to be able to complete all the challenges in the game, well, that. Like, that's no good, right? Stand by. What was it? It was... Was it 500,000? Yeah. But you get the idea here. That, that This was a modern... Yeah, like I said, a modernization of Jetpack, and it was really, really well done, I thought. I really liked it. But my big problem is that, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to check what the challenges are for this game in Rare Replay because yeah, if it ties it to multiplayer achievements, you're effectively never gonna complete it, which I don't think is very cool. But yeah, Jetpack Refueled, still a god goddamn good game. Real good game. Achievements in this game were really nasty, too. I actually don't remember how you boost time. I thought it was those new packages, but it's not. But it's also not fuel. He's playing this so <laughs> there's your idea but uh yeah so that's rare replay um i'm gonna play some more of this but i've definitely got a good idea now of what i want to put in my video and yeah i'm very glad i bought this this is a great collection of games not perfect it's got some issues it's got some omissions 
but uh, a fantastic collection of games from one of the most iconic developers in the industry. Very impressed with that. So, uh, and yeah, I'm very much looking forward to digging into, to completing more of the challenges and digging into some of this rare revealed stuff. Uh, you know, making of, origins of rare, rare's iconic, an in-depth look at rare's best loved games, like, what a freaking cool thing. Yeah, and I got, got a whole bunch of these. I hope they have the the Stamper Brothers in here, After the guys who created uh, Rare, but it doesn't look like they did. They do, which is too bad. We were kind of looking for the next opportunity. But, one part uh, of the team went on to build DKC3, and the other one went on to create a new IP called Project Dream, which at the time but, was on uh, the yeah, so there we go, guys. We're that is Rare Replay. Well, so I hope you guys enjoyed let's, this. Let's uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please Dream like the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it, and of course, the more condensed version of this is also on the channel at the same time, so do look, do look for that. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching and for hanging out. Um, yeah, for $30, I don't think you can go wrong with the value in this package. It is a stunning, stunning value. And uh, good on Rare and Microsoft for putting this out and for putting some real effort into it. I, it's uh, They put the love and attention into this that they put into their other games, and I respect that. So, very cool. But, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Take it easy.